Hey guys, this is Ben with Aqua, Arizona Windsurfing, Kiteboarding, and Wing Foiling Association. Uh, every now and then I'll get the um, uh, comment, uh, somebody will come to our group and uh, ask, you know, if this is a good deal or not. So what I'm going to do is um, peruse today in June of 2023. Um, your typical listings um, for windsurf. Uh, we're going to focus on boards primarily today. Um, first of all, I'm going to cover what to avoid. All right. And first of all, when it comes to windsurfing, uh, as a beginner, volume is king. Okay. You want to um, look for volume, volume, and then volume again, all right? In other words, you need a board um, that can, has the uh, volume in order to uh, keep you afloat and out of the water and um, provide you the stability you're going to need to learn and master um, the basics. Uh, because when you are learning, you are going to be falling. Uh, you're going to be uphauling, what we call uphauling, and bringing up the sail um, to you so that you can manipulate and operate it. You're going to be uphauling that sail rig a lot on the first day and probably your first couple sessions. Um, and so you need a board with sufficient volume and stability to be able to do this um, successfully and um, hopefully very routinely so that you can spend more time on the board and less time in the water having to restart all over again. So um, when it comes to volume and determining, determining what board you should be in, you should uh, take your weight, uh, convert that to kilograms, okay? So for example, I'm on a good day, I'm 150 pounds, okay? That translates roughly to a hair or two less than 70 kilograms, okay? So kind of the rule of thumb when it comes to shopping for a, uh, a beginner board is I'm not shy about saying you should pretty much at least double your, um, your weight in in uh, liters um, basically uh, one kilogram equals equals one liter in the in the metric system but liter is a measure of volume whereas um, kilograms is a measure of mass so in any event um, so by that formula if I'm 70 kilograms and I was just a dead beginner I would look for something twice that or in the approximately 140 range, 150 range, okay? Um, could I get away with something less than that, say one and a half times? That would be the, that would be the floor, in my opinion. You would not want to go less than 150% uh, of your um, weight in, uh, in liters. So, uh, oh, here we go, right here. Uh, 75 bucks, you know, so I'll have people, um, you know, inquire with me, say, you know, Hey, uh, I just found this screaming deal on, uh, Facebook or offer up or Craigslist. And, um, you know, what do you think? Should I get it? I've been wanting to learn or wanting to get back into it or whatever like that. So this is a, uh, outstanding example of what not to, um, what not to buy, okay? First of all, um, it's not going to list the specs, but um, this is a this is an older board, a very you know I'd probably say nineteen maybe late nineteen eighties nineteen nineties, and um, it doesn't list the volume, but just from eyeballing it. Uh, I'm going to tell you that it's probably less than 100 liters, okay? I could already tell you that would be very, very difficult um, 
to to learn. So anyways, you'll see stuff like this on the screen, $75. Um, sometimes they're, they're just giving it away. And even then that might be that might be too expensive. Um, just because you're going to have to store the thing and, you know, we, you want to get something that you're actually going to use. I don't care how cheap it is. Um, cause otherwise it's just a storage headache. All right. To have seen. Okay. Here we go. Here's, here's one that, that zaps people all the time. And then they show up with this thing and, you know, it doesn't matter if they're like somewhat in shape or athletic, um, they're just, they're just going to struggle, okay? So this, again, is probably vintage 80s, 90s. Um, let's see if the volume is happens to be on this thing. It's on there somewhere, but it's hard to see. So I am going to guess. Oh, well, maybe here. It's 282, and that's the other trick, too, is you got to watch out. The, on these older boards, the numbers refer to the length. Uh, of the board in um, centimeters, not necessarily the volume. But um, so the next, uh, moving on from volume, the next thing I wanted to cover is problematically, the, the problem with this board, again, like I said, stability, in addition to float, stability is key uh, when it comes to, to learning and being able to progress and master the basics. You need the lateral stability, that is side-to-side -side stability, in order to be able to uphaul the sail rig um, frequently and become very proficient and almost have that become instinctive and second nature. When the board is very narrow like this, um, uh, you lose balance very, very quickly. Um, which means you're in the water a lot, uh, which means you have to uphaul or try to uphaul all over again, uh, which means a very long first day on the water, a very frustrating first day on the water, and uh, you may not um, ever want to do it again. And we don't want that. Uh, the sport is too, um, it's just too much fun uh, and enjoyable to um, have a bad experience and be soured on it, you know. So this thing has gone from, this thing has been listed for three years, no offense to the, <laughs> the owner of it. Um, but this thing's been listed for three years. He's, he's dropped it, uh, you know, over 50% off. And even then, quite frankly, if, if you're a beginner, this is overpriced. Um, even if uh, they paid you for it, it probably wouldn't paid you to take it away, it probably would not be worth it. So we just looked at. Um, the other thing is, as a beginner, you want something that has a center board or a what they call a dagger board. Uh, um, and the reason um, why you are looking for something with a center board or a dagger board is that uh, when you start out, particularly if you don't have any wind sports um, background or experience, you are going to be um, drifting and being pushed downwind uh, quite often until you're proficient at um, sailing cross, across the wind and, um, and into the wind or upwind. Um, and so the, if you can get, um, it's almost a must that you have a board with a center board or a dagger that can at least help you uh, not only slow the slide or drift downwind, but moreover can help you actually track much easier going upwind so that you can return to your place where you launched or can tack to where you want to go or, or you know, just be able to go home that night. Um, so those are... Um, I would say the three largest things um, to to look for. Now that you know what to avoid, um, and I mean literally, you you want to run from from these listings. Again, this one is um, you know it looks relatively cheap, but entirely too narrow, entirely too low volume. Um, same here. I'm not even going to click on these. 
uh, older board. Um, it's probably, uh, you know, it's, it's, I can tell right here, it's entirely too narrow for beginners, uh, too low a volume, um, you know, and so on and so forth. And, and uh, offer up and formally, uh, you know, you used to see all these, you see a lot of these things on Craigslist. Um, they're just populated with, with stuff like this. So, and, you know, and, and you'll see stuff like this also that, that, you know, it's like, oh, you know, everything you need to get going and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, it has the boom and it has the mass and the sales. And you thought, wow, what a screaming deal. I can get into this for, uh, 150 bucks. And it's like, no, I mean, I'll just go ahead and say it. There's, there's really no, um instance where as a beginner to win um to win sports or windsurfing um specifically you're going to be able to pull this off yeah no so um just avoid it like the plague um because again at the end of the day you're going to end up it's like it's like a chain letter you're going to end up just passing it along to the next sucker and uh, you're going to be miserable and mean, meanwhile your your wife is going to be um yelling at you why why you know, all this shit is taking up your, your garage space. And you don't need that, especially if you're not going to use it. Um, so is there an instance where you would buy something like this? Okay. Especially if it was free or they're giving it away. There actually is, and it's a very, very rare instance. And that is where uh, I have <laughs> a former neighbor of mine who is um, from Europe. And, um, you know, in his younger years, in his 20s and 30s, he actually sailed on boards just like this back in Europe. Um, and uh, this is what he knows, and this is what he's used to, or, or that he can remember is what he's used to. And something like this, which is just, you know, wow, this is just vintage. Um, he's perfectly comfortable uh, on something like this. This See, okay, so here's, here at least the guy lists the literage. 160 liters. That's pretty good for up to, you know, by my formula, 80 kilograms. But again, the issue is, you know, again, if you're a, you know, an absolute beginner, it's entirely too narrow. It's like nine feet long. Um, and I'll get into this in a bit here, but modern boards tend to be wider and they tend to be shorter. So it's much easier to transport. The other issue with these older boards um, that are supposedly screaming deals that I didn't mention is is a lot of them back um, when windsurfing was in its heyday. A lot of the um, connections. So you had, you know, parts which are essentially universal uh, in this day and age, and mod and and can um, fit on just any board maker model. Uh, back then, they were proprietary, and so if you didn't have the right um, uh, mast base for that given um, make of board, um, you know, you you were SOL. So thank God we're we're beyond uh, we're 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 beyond those days. Anyways, as I said, uh, let's get into um, let's uh, let's have some good news and see some of the the better listings, or in other words, what you want to look for in your first um, windsurfing setup if you're um, if you're really really serious about it. Okay, I know this guy, so uh, I'm not plugging him or I don't get anything out of this. But I will say that this is an absolute smoking deal. Okay, it's um, uh, it is designed to be a a beginner board, and I like I said, I know this guy. I've actually begged him not to sell this because it's perfect for his size and his ability. In any event, okay, so so let's talk about it. What what do I like or what should you be looking for? You First of all, you see the number 200 on that. That refers to liters, okay? It does not refer to length in centimeters. So, so um, first of all, you've got plenty of volume here to work with, plenty of float. Um, and I'm going to get to this in a second here. Secondly, what did I mention besides uh, volume, volume, volume is uh, width, okay? And here you have a width of 84.7, which is really pretty wide for a uh, windsurf board. Um, 
And that's going to give you just, it's an aircraft carrier, all right? It's a huge amount of stability uh, side to side, laterally. Uh, you're going to have no, almost no problems um, uh, upholding even, you know, some of the largest, larger sails. And then next, what else did I mention? Um, a dagger board or a center board. And then this, this board comes with that. Um, you can see here this little lever here and this little um, slot. Uh, this will um, bring the uh, dagger board up or retract it as it's needed. So um, when you're learning your first couple times out, you're going to want to have that deployed just so, again, it prevents um, your sliding uh, downwind as well as helping you track because you're not going to be as efficient sailing when you first start out. And it helps kind of, it's like training wheels almost in a way. It'll help you uh, uh, stay on track, stay on course, and also it'll help drive, uh, help your upwind sailing drive uh, much, much, uh, uh, much more than if you were not to have that plastic. So other things that uh, are great about this board, um, uh, I think it's fully an EVA deck. It's a soft deck, so it's really, really going to be easy on your knees as well as your feet. Because uh, as you get on and, and up haul, as you see in some of these clips here, I'll be showing of me doing it, um, you know, you're going to be on your knees a lot. And the last thing you want is on these other listings, I mean, something like this, and I'm a, I'm a huge fanatic guy, it's a, I'm a big fan of the brand, but I mean, this is going to have a very rough sandpapery texture designed to be non-slip, uh, and that's great if, if you're on your feet. Uh, it's it's basically um, torture if uh, <laughs> you have to be on your knees getting to your feet, you know, a couple dozen times on your first session out. So anyways, let's move on to this one. This is a little pricier, um, but relatively speaking, and I know this fellow too, but um, relatively speaking, given everything that's, that's being um, kicked in, uh, this is an absolute, this is probably uh, actually even a better deal than, than the other one. So, uh, why do I say that? Let's, let's, um, kind of ignore all the other, cause we're, we're talking about boards here. So, um, so this is a starboard, uh, which is just a, uh, iconic, uh, windsurfing water sport brand been around for, um, you know, decades now, uh, make, you know, tremendous, tremendous stuff. Anyways, this is a starboard Rio, and uh, what again, um, you're probably able to figure this out now. It's got a ton of features that are outstanding for the beginning and progressive rider, but, um, you know, so I'm going to overlook quite a bit of their features. But anyway, so, you, you, you know, you probably can figure this out by now. What do I like about it? Uh, without looking at it, this, I forget which size he said this starboard Rio was. Um, but the Rio only comes in large, this, the, of this, of this, uh, model year only comes in large, medium, and small. And even assuming this is small, uh, I believe the small is 160 liters. Um, but you know, I mean, it's, it's got, uh, enough width that even if it could probably well handle somebody up to approaching 200. Um, it doesn't look it because starboard Rio is, is rather a, a, you know, a long board, but, um, the width is more than adequate to be able to uphaul even some of the largest sails. Um, again, what did I mention? It has a center board, not only a center board, but a one that is a retractable center board too, as you can see on this lever, like we saw earlier on the, on the Goya. Um, there it is. There's an example of this lever. And as you can see from the clips I'll be showing here, um, it's neat because when you become a little more proficient, you're ready to go fast and get on plane, you can just kick this thing forward with your foot and um, all of a sudden you're going a lot a lot faster. But at the same time, if you're still struggling with going upwind or you know need to get back to wherever you came from, just deploy with a, a um, kick of the foot. Just deploy that dagger board and you can go, uh, um, you can start tracking much, much easier. So uh, other great features, again, like with the Goya, um, 
you know, on the business uh, end or part of the board, fully covered in a in a very nice, um, uh, uh, soft yet durable EVA uh, foam deck. But I think what, in addition to just being a fantastic board, what what makes this um, listing so enticing is that it comes with everything. Uh, whereas the Goya, which we just looked at, um, you'd have to get um, the various components, your sail rig, on your own. And that is my video on friends do not let friends buy inexpensive windsurf boards on Facebook slash Craigslist slash OfferUp. Appreciate you guys uh, listening. I hope this was helpful, especially for those of you who um, are looking to get into the uh, sport of windsurfing uh, and have yet to hopefully um, put down your hard-earned money on any of the supposed steals or deals that um, uh, I've, I've covered or tried to cover in this video. So. Uh, if you like this video, uh, please don't forget to hit like below and let uh, Google's algorithm know. Um, also, uh, if you have yet uh, to do so, feel free to go ahead and subscribe to the official Aqua YouTube channel. Uh, as always, this is Ben with Aqua wishing you good wins and happy sailing.